Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. In this video, it's not going to be so much a tutorial. Um, this, what I want to do is I want to actually show you guys this sort of playground I've been working on with uh, Go and the Echo framework. And basically what I was doing here is I was working on... So let me just give you guys a tour. So first, let's take a look at the Go mod. The Go mod is kind of like your package.json in a... In, in, in a JavaScript node project. So I'm using the echo library version four. I brought in the Postgres driver and I'm using GORM, which is the Go ORM or one of several ORMs, but Go RMs is a Go ORM. Okay, and then the tr one of the trickiest things is like using the Go, the GORM documentation, the way the documentation is written doesn't make it very clear to kind of how to, to write it the way I needed it for this particular situation because I wanted to break it up into multiple files. So I want to set up sort of my database uh, stuff in these files. So let me just give you a tour of how this is all set up. So this is my server.go where I set up the server. So I'm bringing in echo as an import. Okay, this is all code. A lot of it's commented out because a lot of that code I've moved into other files now. And then basically I created this function called connect that connects to the database. And that creates the initial connection. So what I so basically, if you if you read the GORM documentation, what they do is that um, you do an implied an impl applied um, assignment. Problem is, implied assignments cannot occur like sort of in the global space. You have to kind of do them in the side of a function or inside the main function. So, but what I want to do is I want to declare a variable that's going to be available to sort of my entire application. So in that case, I need to do like a, a var declaration which requires a typing and the it took me a second to kind of find the exact right type to declare this DB variable. Once I did that, the rest is pretty straightforward. Same thing, I declared the error here as well. So that way I can then, you know, make these make this stuff available uh, in the in the global space. Here I'm just saving the the did the, the connection string in order to connect to my particular Postgres database and then I created this function connection object or connection function and basically what it does it runs a connection so basically again the gorm open function is either going to return the database connection or it's going to return an error so that's why i need to have both of these there okay because one of the others is going to be returned the returned value will go into the value of the right type okay so then here i'm using this here i'm using a the postgres.open function from the postgres drivers passing in the connection string if that succeeds okay and then this just basically connects this is just a pointer to gorm's config object so that way when this connects they can then configure the gorm instance um and that's what that does now of course you can't ha it'll throw you errors if you have a variable that is unused in go so i can't just you know, move forward, I have to make put that error variable to use in case there is an error. So I just do a quick, you know, conditional operation that like, hey, if if the there is an error, do throw out an error. If not, just say, hey, print the database is connected in the terminal and life's good. And then basically here, uh, I do my migration. So that way all my models are initially migrated. So every time I create a new model, I can just migrate it here. And the way you migrate it is that basically you're going to put a pointer uh, to the struct of that, that that defines your model. So if I go to my data thing here, here's where I define, uh, well, that's my initial data. Where's my model? I think it's here too. Nope, I think it's going to be, where is my, oh, types. Here we go. It's in types. Types.go. So here I have my model struct. And again, you can use within the same package. So since this is all in the main folder, this is all the main package. So I can, all these things can refer to each other long as the variables are uppercase. So I'm able to use this person variable, this struct in my other files because it's uppercase. Okay, and then I have to just add this gorm.model piece here. So that way it knows it's, it's a gorm model. So that way when I auto migrate, it knows to either create a table or connect to the table, uh, to the right table. Okay, so that's what that does. Cool. Okay. And then here, because the because I define the database object in its own variable, 
and then it's uppercase so I can use another file so I can now use that same database object in my handlers to do database operations which is what we do here we'll come back to that but then I go to my server.go we use the connection function that connects it migrates everything okay and then we create the new application object using echo to create a new server and then here I define my routes connecting them to my handler functions okay and then here we define we, we kickstart the the server okay then if I go to my handlers okay here's my initial handler which is just uh, the, the index route which is just me playing with like querying the database so basically what, the way it works it is always this took me a second to kind of get used to and go that the way a lot of these like ORMs work and the way you receive a lot of data is you just create a container you create a very an empty variable that can receive the correct type of data and the database functions kind of infer what to do from there so since I'm defining a variable called people that is typed as an array of persons, when I, pa I pass a pointer to that variable to the find function, it then just, well, finds all the people and stores them in that variable. Okay, and like, how does it know to look in the people table? Because when I migrated, it, makes, it creates that association between the struct of person to the person's table that got created when you migrated. So then it knows, okay, well, we're looking up per people of person type. So that's gonna come from the person table and it's fine. So it finds the entire array and then we pass it into this array and then that's kind of how it works, which is pretty cool. Um, one of these days I need to take a look at under the hood of kind of like, how do you set that up? Like, how do you uh, set that up? But it's pretty cool. Um, definitely makes me appreciate typing a little bit uh, more in the way they kind of use it here. And then here we just return, we use the, the JSON function in the in the uh, handler's context because every handler has a context object and everything's inside the context. And we use the JSON, we have to pass in sort of an HTTP status and the data we're sending back as JSON. And then that's how that works. Now here's one to create a person. Here I'm pulling the data from the URL. So if we take a look at my server go, see I'm using URL params to grab the, a new name and age to create a new person. Because I didn't want to like use Postman to go have to like get a request by, I was just playing around. So I go back to my handler for my create. If we walk through this one, okay. I grab the name parameter and I grab the age parameter from the context. Now the age again, all your params come in a string, so I have to convert that string into a integer. And there's a chance that might error, so that's why I have to create this whole error secondary variable. And because I can't leave a variable unused, I have to do the whole conditional, the test, if there's an error. So that's all there. That's always, like, this is always a little verbose for me, but that's because I'm not, I spend most of my time in JavaScript where this kind of extra stuff isn't necessarily always required. But I am familiar with this kind of pattern because also in Ballerina, another language I've been learning, uh, they do the same thing where you have to sometimes a something's typed that it could also be an error. So then you have to make sure you test to see whether it's in the error or the other type before you can actually use the data in that language. OK, so here what I'm doing is we're creating a new person. So we're creating a new variable of type person. We pass in the name and the age property. Then we pass a pointer to that new person using the db create function and it again it's just going to pick up on the type of data to figure out what table it's adding it to and then take the data from that variable and add it to the table and then what i did is i went then when grabbed all the people again and returned the full list of people so you can see the full list with the new name on it and that's it was all fun i mean again the, the biggest thing was just kind of figuring out this because again if you read the documentation for gorm the way they show sort of the sample connection code is you're doing it inside of a function, which works, but again, then that DB variable has to be reestablished in every function. So I was trying to figure out how to set it up in a global way that I can use it across all my handlers, kind of like the way I would normally do it with like, if I was, if this were like JavaScript and JavaScript, I always kind of like, you have your server.js and then you connect to your Mongo database, or you connect to your Postgres database with like SQLize or connects, right? The, and then it's just that connection's available to the rest of your application. I kind of wanted that set up here. So I figured it out. It's pretty cool. I'm liking it. Um, but yeah, just wanted to show you guys that in case you were thinking about how to set up a database with the Echo framework. Um, 
if you're using the Echo Framework in Go and know a little bit more about Gorm and kind of how you can set this all up. So you guys have a great day and enjoy. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.